This past week, I've been researching serial killers. Official disclosure, trigger warning, this video contains very triggering sensitive topics and if at any time you feel uncomfortable and don't watch it anymore, don't force yourself to it. This will be the true horrifying nature of humans. Before we start this video, I partnered with my friend Enigma and he's gonna voice over one of these events, these tragic events uh, in this story and take you to my supporters who um, even bought me this microphone. Uh, all their names are over here right now. I'll be giving them a more formal shout out at the end of the video. But thank you so much for supporting me. Uh, and you know, uh, it, it's been really great. So thank you very much. And without further ado, let's get into the video. The Werewolf of Bedburg. The Werewolf of Bedburg was accused of eating his own children. He was accused of eating 14 children as well as two pregnant women. The werewolf of Bedburg is a German farmer man and his name was Peter Stube. And Peter Stube, he was very special because uh, he was accused of something that isn't normally accused of werewolf and that is because he forcefully assaulted women as well as he forcefully had intercourse with women which was not associated with werewolf. Peter Stube was put on trial in 1589 and his trial starts like this. From his youth, he was greatly inclined to evil and practicing the wicked arts, surfeiting in the damnable desires of magic, necromancy, and sorcery, acquainting himself with many infernal spirits and fiends. Under his confession, he said that he had a belt that could turn him into a, a werewolf or a form of wolf, and that he would commit these unthinkable crimes. And he committed these crimes during the European witch hunts, which means that either he was falsely accused like many women at that time, or that he was a serial killer accused of being a werewolf. The Retaliator, the man who marked everyone who had wronged him as a target for revenge in his mass killing. The year is 1949, right after World War II. There was a man named Howard Unruh sitting in his car. He was an ex-GI from World War II. World War II had changed him. People felt he was detached, moody, and nervous. And World War II was a horrifying event with death flowing through the air. Anyone would think that an ex-soldier wouldn't want to perpetuate more death after the horrors of World War II but we were dead wrong. To go back to the story, in 1949, Howard Unruh was late for his date. After he arrived at the date spot, his date had left. Frustrated and perhaps even upset, he stood at the date spot until 2.20 in the morning. He then decided to drive back home and arrive back at his place at 3 a.m. When he arrived back home, he saw that the fancy place was tempered with. These series of events would anger him and would make him want to commit a mass killing. Every time Howard Unruh felt like his neighbor was talking bad about him, he would keep note about his neighbors and wrote his plans to take revenge against them. He thought they were mocking his mother or talking behind his back. He wrote their names down and cryptic codes beside them like RET, WTS, which meant retaliate when time suitable, or the code DNDR, do not delay retaliation. On September 6, he woke up as normal, wore a tropical shirt, and went to his bedroom. His mother saw that he was acting strange that day as he was oddly distracted. In his bedroom, he took out his German Luger PO8 9mm pistol he had bought for 3750 cents with two loaded clips and 37 additional ammunition and headed out. He first headed to a shoe shop of which he entered and without saying a word, pointed his gun at the owner and shot him in the head twice. He then went to Clark Hoover's barber shop where he saw Clark cutting a small kid's hair and he shot the barber and the kid leaving the mom to rush to her dead son and mourn while he left. Afterwards, he went down in his neighborhood shooting at people in his list that he saw and shooting random people who were in his way. At the end, he went back to his house and went back to sleep. He was then arrested by the police and when asked about his actions, he said, I'm no psycho. I have a good mind. He was sentenced to life in a psychiatric facility. La Bestia. He was nicknamed the Beast for the horrendous thing that he has done. Uh, because also, people said that he displayed a double personality sometimes. He was a fervent religious man who had guilt and felt human emotions. And on the other hand, he was a heartless man who committed unthinkable and horrific crimes. His name was Luis Gravito. And he has committed 
almost 200 or 193 uh, murders of young children as well as forcefully uh, having intercourse with these children. Ruiz Gravito was born in Colombia in a political turmoil. He uh, got off the period in Colombia called La Violencia, which was a civil war that was tragic and brutal and left damages even after the civil war was over. Right after uh, Ruiz's bust, there was battles between uh, the Colombian army and guerrilla, and you know they always had to change uh, houses, which of course created instability uh, to the family. As well, his father was very abusive to his wife. Uh, he often beat her and insulted her in front of his own child. And his father's uh, friend was constantly, uh, even as a young, young child, he was uh, abusing and, have, and forcefully uh, having sexual intercourse with, uh, with Luis. And you know, when he got older, he uh, lured children. He told him that he would pay them uh, 800 to 1,000 pesos for them to help uh, with his calls, and you know many would agree because you know uh, they, they were children and you know very gullible, and you know they were put into very isolated places. While uh, Luis would take advantage of them, uh, he would tie them up and he would bite them, he would burn them with candles, and eventually ended up killing them uh, and claiming hundreds of lies. And you know, he, he you know, I even read stories of where he he saw the children happily running with his mother, and you know, decided to do it anyways. Decided to take to, to, to this kid away from his his, his mother. You know, even as he saw you know happy family, you know, without any remorse, without any human remorse, and you know, as it, it is truly uh, something that that is horrifying, and you know. Uh, but thankfully, at the end he was caught and he was sentenced to death. I made a little mistake there. Apparently he didn't receive death sentence and is only receiving 60 years in prison. <sighs> that's, that's depressing. The Red Dress Killer. I couldn't find a lot of information about this because um, the, the, the performance of police is very secretive within China. Um, the details of it is, you know, very, you know, there's not that much detail about it. But what you know is that in the mid-1999, a young 24-year-old student was going back home when she walked into a dark alleyway. Subsequently, she was brutally stabbed. This triggered a wave of fear in China. He targeted, possibly allegedly, women who were in, in their 20s and had red dresses. And it was also the place where there was a rise in criminal cases and, you know, uh, just Overall, a lot of fear ranging around, and this new killer roaming the streets created a true fear. And you know, women were cutting their hair very short so that they they don't darn a target. Uh, of course, they wouldn't wear red dresses because you know, even if the rumors weren't true, you know, it was better to not wear it because if it was true, then you know the consequences are are devastating. And you know, uh, eventually he would be caught and sentenced to death. The Satanist or El Satanico. The last case is the Satanist, and this one has disturbed me the most because he performed these ritualistic sacrifices, from what I understand, on people that really trusted him. His friend, his best friend, his lover, his friends, and he would sacrifice them because all of his, well, we think that, that, that that's what is happening because he did it always before Halloween or October 31. Uh, his victims would often be mutilated and um, the middle finger as well as the ring finger would be removed so that they would form a sat satanic hand movement called the sign of war. As well, this sign would be carved either on their bodies or uh, besides them on a stand, for example. Um, and what is truly disturbing is that he is, he is very much still there and um, he's currently facing trial. Uh, he was arrested in 2019 and because of the COVID it was delayed and you know we're not sure what's going to happen to him but I hope he gets what he deserves. Thank you for watching this video and I hope this was educational uh, both on the history of it and as well as how these people, uh, what is the modus operandi of these people um, and you know I hope you find value in it and I hope you follow me for more dark history on this page 
and I'll see you guys in the next video. Huge thanks to my Kofi supporters, Kyle Nichols, Audrey Weeks, Kyle EXE, Alicia Mass, Tyler Luch, Lolo X12, Elk, Dilly, Riley Culver, Java City Coffee, Sarah Palancios, and Luke.